ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help. Uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Town of Arlington Redevelopment Board meeting on uh, September 9th, 2024. My name is Rachel Sunbury. I'm the chair of the board, and I'd like to call this meeting to order. Uh, could it be other members of the board, please introduce themselves. Steve Revelock, good evening. Eugene Benson. Shana Corman Houston. Kittle out. Thank you. And we have the director of the Department of Planning and Community Development, Claire Ricker, joining us this evening as well. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. Uh, let's go ahead and start with our first agenda item, which is a review of the meeting minutes from August 5th, 2024. Uh, I will uh, check with the board to see if there are any additions or corrections, starting with Ken. None. Steve? None. Jean? I do not have any. Shana? None. I don't have any either. Uh, so we will see if there is a motion to approve the meeting minutes as submitted. So motion. Second. We'll take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Jean? Yes. Shana? Yes. Ken? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Those meeting minutes have been approved. Uh, let's go ahead and move to our second agenda item, which is the public hearing for docket number 3816, 5 to 7 Belknap Street. This is a um, site plan review uh, related to a, an application that was filed on August 8th, 2024. Uh, what I'll first do is um, turn it over to uh, Claire Ricker for, a, uh, for an introduction, and then we will provide the applicant with up to 10 minutes for a presentation. Great, thank you very much. Um, this is uh, an application uh, by Michael Collins of 5 to 7 Bill Nap Street. Um, to open um, well, a, a docket in accordance with the provisions of the Town of Arlington Zoning Bylaw under Site Plan Review. This is this board's first um, um, hearing um, of Site Plan Review, um, so this has been a, 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 in the works for a while, um, and um, we're excited to get started um, uh, with the review this evening. The applicant um, is proposing to demolish an existing two-family uh, structure and garage construct a new uh, fourplex and four-unit multifamily development uh, comprised of two front-to-back uh, buildings separated by a courtyard with each structure containing two townhouse style units. In addition, the applicant proposes a driveway with four vehicle parking spaces, each with its own EV charger and a storage shed for parking for four bicycles. Um, let's see. Materials submitted include the application for site plan review, the impact statement, of course drawings, uh, and site plan of existing conditions of the proposed site plan, conventional parking information, architectural drive, and the shadow study, and a product of materials list. That is it from our end. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so uh, if I could uh, see who is here this evening from the applicant. Yes. Fantastic. So um, if I could ask that you please uh, each introduce yourself. I do want to make sure that if there uh, is some place that they need to sit in order that the um, speaker picks them up, can they sit anywhere or I'm looking at our friend from ACMI, do they need to sit anywhere specifically or can they sit where they are and will the speaker pick them up? Um, I think they can uh, sit where they are for now. Perfect. Thank you so much. So if you wouldn't mind, please, um, introducing um, your entire group, and then um, we'd love for you to uh, make whatever presentation you have for us this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm so for it. Uh, for the record, my name is Brian Grail. I'm an attorney licensed in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Come at 607 Jalanta Avenue in Wakefield, Massachusetts. I'm a major attorney representing 5 Belknap Street, LLC. Leading to the property of 5 7 Belmont, the Belmont Street uh, in Allen. Uh, with me tonight is Michael Collins. Uh, he is the manager of the entity of 5 Belmont uh, Street LLC. Uh, Rigette Steins is our team architect, and Paul Finocchio is uh, a site uh, engineer. Paul was back there in the picture. Uh, I'm going to be relatively quick and hand on to uh, Rigette for the presentation. I just kind of wanted to set the table, if I may. Uh, as you're aware, the town of Arlington uh, is going by law section 5.9, the related multifamily overlay districts were recently enacted by the town, the town of Arlington town meeting as required by Mass General Laws Chapter 40A, Section 3A, often referred to as the MTA Community Zoning Law. 
which was enacted to help combat uh, the housing crisis that we're facing in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. The five Belknap Street property is located within one of those overlay districts, the neighborhood multifamily overlay district, which means it's within the jurisdiction ineligible under Section 5.9 of the Town Ballot and Zoning Bylaw. As such, as stated in the publication of the notice, my client proposes to demolish the existing two family building and garage on the property and to construct uh, a new four unit multifamily housing project comprised of, as you will see, two separate buildings, each with two units uh, located within them. This application, pursuant to the provisions of Section 509 of the Zoning Bylaw, only requires site plan review for this project. Uh, under National Laws 40, uh, 40A, Section 3A, and pursuant to Section 5 of the Zoning Bylaw, this project is allowed by right, as of right, with no requirement for a special permit or no other discretionary permit, just site plan review. This may be your first application you've received in this regard, but I'm sure you're familiar with the re recently enacted, enacted zoning amendment uh, in the town of Arlington. Uh, we have submitted a very robust application and plans and supporting materials for review. Uh, respecting the limited time that we have with the approval of uh, the chair, I'd like to hand it off to Bridgette to make a general presentation, and then we'll be happy to get from uh, detailed questions that we have and delve into more detail as you deem appropriate when necessary. That sounds good. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Thanks for the introduction. Good to you joining the chair. Good Members, so before you uh, get too far, if I could ask you to please project as much as you can. There is a loud HVAC yeah. noise, and I know that it can be challenging right. for others to hear. And I would like to ask you to move down because that would be fun. Wherever you would like to sit, would you help Sarah easier that we need to move on to the next slide? So, okay. thank, you. So, thank you. So, I'm going to try to speak up. Thank so, you. So, yeah, um, as Brian already said, we are applying, we're proposing a four unit three story building, and I'm not going to repeat all what he um uh, introduced already the the project but i still want to run you through every sheet what we had in the in the application because there might be members here or in the audience who haven't seen it seen it all sure so i'll just let you know every member of the board has thoroughly reviewed the application so if there are things you want to highlight i think that would be the best use of our time this evening okay Thank all right you. So on the first sheet, the, first, the most important part here is that you can see in the dashed line in the middle part on the site plan that the, in the light blue shades, the squares are the proposed buildings. In the, in the dashed lines, this is the uh, existing garage, um, the existing house, the back porch, and the front porch. And it's important to see the massing and the footprint, how it relates to each other, that we are adding some footprint, but not tremendously uh, to the footprint. Uh, next, next slide, please. Um, this is this is not the main presentation. Sorry, I can work with it. Leave it. <laughs> we we work with that, so it's part of it. So um, this is this is the site uh, site plan, which tells tells the most about how we set up the uh, the project. Uh, we wanted to have the buildings staggered, the four units that it's not a monotonous uh, front to, uh, towards Belknap. It has, um, it's not just one block. We split it up that we have access in between the buildings to get some light and some air in between the buildings. The site plan is set up that we have a driveway and a side strip with a percolating uh, parking, parking spaces. So each unit has uh, a parking, parking spot is not required by uh, the bylaws. Um, we do have uh, on the other side uh, to the neighbors at the bottom, uh, we are required to have a setback of five feet. We allow for seven feet. Um, we also adjusted uh, the, the buildings in that regard after several uh, hearings with the, with the neighborhood uh, outreach to accommodate more privacy for the direct neighbors there and staggered the building more towards the, the front instead of instead of the back. Um, we do have a, a bike rack in, in the back and um, uh, trash units that, that it's clean and orderly and, and uh, covered 
uh, there. The, the front side, and maybe I can explain that better with the uh, images to the front. Yes, this one is, is a good one that uh, we can show how the building transitions from the right side, from the flat roof, from the big building, uh, which is much further set back than our building, uh, and then transitions to the next. Uh, we have chosen a color palette, which is uh, prevalent in the in the neighborhood. Um, this is a, a, a street with uh, several uh, housing um, styles. So we have duplexes, which are totally flat in the front with gable and a couple of uh, single gable roofs in the front. Uh, we wanted to have it staggered that we don't have this one flat surface in the front. The, the uh, porch in the front is uh, has wide steps to, towards the street uh, to, um, to foster communication with passerbys and not turning the back basically or, or being, being welcoming to the, to the street. Um, can you go up once Oh, there. Yeah, maybe to the roof. Yes, the roof plan. Um, the uh, so we uh, we have roof decks and uh, we oriented the roof decks, which is the uh, uh, on the on the right on the right side towards uh, Belknap Street, uh, which provides some outdoor space for the neighbors, but it's it's facing away, particularly uh, from from the back neighbor. The, where it says mechanical space, the empty space is uh, for solar ready uh, installation and also for heat pump inverters uh, since the entire building is entirely electric. Um, we do have, I missed to say on the side plan, we do have uh, poles for electric car chargers for every car. Um, in terms of the uh, numbers, we are below the uh, uh, the allowable uh, footprint, we are under the allowable height of 35 feet. So 35 feet is allowed. We are at the highest point of the roof at 18 inches below. Uh, we, as I said earlier, we set it back seven feet instead of five feet. Uh, we do not ask for any relief. Uh, we are within the setback uh, requirements. Mm. What else did I forget? Is there the maybe I just show my boards because I don't think in this presentation are the um, basically the the elevation. Clear to the top. The slide. It's it's called main. It was yeah the latest we have sent. <laughs> so um. Where would it best to put it? Maybe oh, hold it up. Front. You hold it up. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Right. So um, on the on the left side, you're gonna see um, the front facing uh, Belknap facing. On the right side is the driveway. You can see that the uh, doghouse on the on the top um, is not is is hardly visible from the street, depending on the on the uh, eye height or where the where the walk passers by are. So it's not really visible if you're right at the at the walkway in the front. If you step back, you would see the top of the of the uh, dark house, but it's not very prominent. Um, we do have a base, uh, incorporated base on the side and, and small balconies, which are not really balconies, but they are kind of porches and also foster a better a better uh, communication between, at least visually, between the street and the uh, and the residents. Um, so we just right. If you have about one more minute. Okay. All right. I think I'm even been trying to talk fast. I think I'm almost through. Okay. So let me see if there's one more important. We have the other one, um, but we did show the. Uh, but, oh yeah, down lights. We don't have any up lights uh, lighting for the community, so everything is a soft light going down. Uh, 
the, the finishes are matching kind of what you find in the street with clapboard, uh, just mixing it up with vertical and horizontal and try to get as much sustainable materials in there as we can. Thank you. Great, thank you very much. Uh, so I'm going to turn it over to the members of the board for any uh, questions or comments, starting with Steve. I do, I do have a, a few questions regarding the bicycle market. Um, so I see you've, you've, you're providing a little shout out that uh, will the parking will the parking be such that the bikes can be just filled in the place? I saw one where it looked like uh, I think it was situated on a on a rear wheel. So we do have one rendering where it's an upright. Uh, it's an upright for the most efficient. Um, here. Okay. Um, yeah. um, so the bike, the bike parking so far, we wanted to maximize as much as we can get in and also make it as safe as possible uh, for not for cars backing out and, and bike riders coming in. But the, the, the design, how efficient and how many bikes we can get in, we don't have really worked out in, in every single detail, but we assume four to six bike bicycles. Okay, and how, how tall is it? Um, the shed might be six feet. Six feet, so it's large, tall enough to stand up. Yeah, yeah, stand up. yeah, yeah. And will there be, will it be, um, will you deliver power to it? I have not thought about it, but, um, I guess that's an easy possibility because we have uh, the electric car charger there. So we have in the driveway um, electricity. So, so yeah, it's lighting, so lighting. Lighting and also um, you know, assuming e-bikes are, uh, we sell about as many of them roughly as electric. Yeah, that's electric. a good, that's a good point. We just haven't Charging. been there yet. So, but yes, yeah. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Jean. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you for the very complete application. Um, I just have a few questions. One is where next winter, and then to um, to follow the driveway where the snow goes. Where the snow load goes. So um, the snow load is probably has to be uh, on the on the side strip. Uh, is my guess, um, or in the in the back, in in the front. There's in the, in the very front. You see, it will be more compromised how the cars get in and out. But that's a reality reality we have in in all denser areas um, that you can see on the cyclone on the very right, and um, the darker uh, crisscrosses basically uh, are areas where that could happen towards the towards the new. You know, my, my concern is that I was going to end up pushing this snow up in the street, but I'm not allowed to do that in the sidewalk. So how are you going to manage that so they know where to this? Um, I mean, this is something that, which has to be worked out then in regulations where they have to where, where they have to put the snow. Um, like in any other denser uh, property as well. And I, I can assure you that I've had multiple projects where they actually will have to remove the snow from site. Contractors to do that and they'll take it off site when it gets to a certain point. And usually that will be that it can't appear in the parking spaces uh, or the way of the way if that happened. It just has to be the snow contract. I think we'll have to put the back to thinking about that. Yeah. Because, you know, how these place in forms, you know, that I can see. Um, the 12 inch strip along the property line, yeah, uh, so on the right side. But I couldn't quite tell what the plantings are going to be. And the, the plantings will be low plantings, um, which are not interfering when you open the door. So it will be something which is. Uh, Easy native growing uh, doesn't require much water and um, is uh, staying kind of probably 18 inches max high.
I have to think about that because I should be a visual author in the house next door in this, and I'm not sure that's in there. I mean, we could. We could. That might be the small. I mean, we could we could consider uh, like grasses or a higher growing um, plant there. It's I don't know how how sustainable that is in the proximity of the of the parking. How much home? How they would be? That's why it's a compromise between between both. So right now there is no buffer in between either. So we have the driveway um, exactly at the same spot and um, with the house. So there's no change basically to the to the neighbor. And it's far away enough. So there's no, there is not really, a, I don't see the other side is a, is a different story and there are higher plants uh, provided and screening. Last question is, I, I saw in the drawings, there's a railing on the front. Is that going to be the same railing on the side also? We have a handrail in the front. And if it is... On the roof deck, I'm sorry. On the roof deck, yes. 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 So, so each, the, the mechanical, mechanical area does not have a roof deck because it's not meant for people uh, to be there. It has a gate for, for safety. Um, um, but the, the roof deck, of course, needs to have a railing right. for safety, definitely. And how high will that be? 42 inches. Okay. Yeah, those are all my questions. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Shana. Um, let's see. So, so the, I want to echo Jean. Thank you yeah. for such a thorough um, application. I, I appreciate the work that went into this. Um, I, I saw in your application that, um, that the, uh, impervious square footage on the site is going to be reduced from the current, um, and just looking at, um, just looking at a Google Maps, uh, view, it, it was difficult to visualize that. Could you, um, speak to what yes. those surfaces will be? Yes. So the, um, I'm doing the reading glasses to put the actual number, but the impervious uh, uh, surface will not increase by a whole lot because if you look at the at the asphalt, do you have by any chance the uh, existing site plan? Either by the surface. Could you speak about the Sure, sure, yes. So um, that's the proposal. We need, yeah, the existing at one, one up. Yes. All the way at the top. Yes, this one. So in the very back, you see the garage, which is, uh, of course, covered area. Then between the um, existing house and the neighbor to the property line to the right is all asphalt except for some lilies growing along uh, the house. So this is a big area which is which is covered. Um, then the footprint, the porch in the back and in the front. And what we what we did with the driveway is that the parking area is a uh, rubber material which is uh, percolated. You can park on it. Uh, there's pea gravel in between and cars can park safely on it, but it's at the same time a percolating area. So the whole strip, we made the wider strip uh, at least partially percolating. So and with that, we could help that we don't increase the, the impervious uh, surface too much. Okay, thank you. Um, did that answer your question? It did, thank you. Um, the, the patios in, in the rear, are those uh, for common use or are there those for the use of just They are for individual use. Individual also, use. it's pretty, it's relatively designed, relatively open. In, in, the, in the back on the left side, you can see there, I envision a small fence in between, uh, some privacy landscaping in between. 
uh, but the steps, for example, are open. So there's no handrail or anything in between. So it, this is the porch, it's a, it's a common area. And is there, um, uh, apart from the roof depths, are there, uh, I guess that means there's there's no outdoor space for the for units one and two, is that, is that correct? <clears throat> But the outdoor spaces are in the front yard and in the in the backyard. Okay. The backyard is a little bit bigger for for private use and also more private. Mm -hmm. um, the the front is more facing, but it will have a, a barbecue area area to use. And, this and the space in between is common use. Um, uh, is there any other note is that should look at the solar by bylaw. I think you may be required to have solar on the roof. We do. We did actually a full study, which we also submitted. It's not part of the presentation because it's quite a package. Basically, where we look, how much do we need to power these buildings? How much um, solar can we put on the uh, on the roofs that we are safe there? So we did the full study uh, already. How much we need? How much water do we need? How much? Um, can be gained from that area. It is fully solar ready for for residents who, who want it when they move it. And I'm getting a little whisper from, okay. from the code guru that yeah. in fact I'm incorrect. Solar is not required. It's the readiness. It's required, and that's what we are what we are providing. Yeah. And, and the then it's the individual who is who is, who is uh, uh, communicating with the builder. The builder. I wanted it installed right away. It probably depends on where Massachusetts is at that point with incentives and all that, but it's definitely, definitely there. Yeah. Uh, I have nothing further. further. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. I also echo uh, very nice, complete package here. Thank you. Uh, a couple, couple quick questions. In the strip along parking, are there any uh, sight light? Bollards like lighting, or say light bulbs, or anything, wall pack lights off the building. That is, um, that's a good point. Um, we we have not foreseen that, but it would be easy, maybe not bollards, because they are problem with the uh, snow plowing, or over the cars in a narrow driveway. Uh, but we can think about having um, lights, very subtle lights, um, at the house wall which shine down, that at least the walkway uh, would be uh, covered, but not really. I, I, so Arlington itself is um, has a lot of light itself, it that it's a more denser area, so it's very that it gets pitch, pitch, pitch black, dark, but um, it might be a good, good idea to install for safety reasons at the house wall, but at the lower level, lights which go down. Well, we do have a couple of regulations in Arlington. Uh, no off lights, so if we have a dark sky. Yes, that's what I meant. That was my last sentence thing when I started then, to talk fast. Uh, yes. That's fine. <laughs> and then we also don't want light from your project shining onto your neighbor's yeah. house, their windows, so red yeah. and silver for things. Yeah. So just mind how you locate the lights and the water trouble like that that you plan to use. Yeah, that's, that's a good uh, point. Yeah. Typically, if this was a full you, I would ask you to put that in. Yeah. Okay. I'm just, I'm just noting it now here, saying that you, you, if you put the lights in, make sure you follow the, the regulations. Yeah. Good point. And then my other one is you have a front patio, a center patio, and a back patio, or, or however you want to call it. Uh, is that a deck, or is it? on walls and it's filled in and it's actually a solid uh, patio or is it uh, so by construction the middle part is solid okay um and the it's it's filled in and the uh, the front porch is or in the back porch is a, is a traditional construction with wood construction so on a foundation so it's some sort of sauna tube with some sauna tube exactly yeah, some decking and so Correct. right because okay. you, you, you do your every job showing what you want for the roof deck and to show what, what the pavers, 
but you don't show uh, it's just one ring. We have one picture in there in the presentation, uh, which is 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 uh, effective or similar. So one of a composite material in gray color. There's a letter size sheets at the very end. Um, yeah, at the at the bottom here. So a lighter and darker gray. We suggested a composite material. Yeah, this one. Yeah, at the bottom. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, tracks are similar. So that's a bit of front and back. And, it, and so that's actually, uh, you don't have a roof on top of that, right? No. So do you, so, so does that count as a permanent space there? This, we counted it not as permanent space. We counted this as impervious space. Yeah, though. We could then, I guess. But yeah. there's no roof on the forward, right? Correct. And all this the depth of spacing in it. So so that would add to your little wheel. Oh, there. that's that's good. Yeah. Okay. That's so it, it only helps you. I'm not trying to Great. say thank you. So much. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then uh just a quick question if you had yeah. with anything else, but are these condos or uh, rentals? Condos. Condos, okay. So uh, there'll be a Condo box for the site, and they'll, they'll be under one uh, supervision, maintaining any of that stuff. So, last week we put the regulations on, on the snow, trash removal, and all that kind of stuff. All the regulations, so it's not up to the individual owners. So, all right, it's okay. That goes a long ways. Uh, yes. We have proper management companies, so it's to, you know, wish you, but wish you had a nice owner. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's all I had. Um, the uh, only item that I'll uh, mention now before we open this up to public comment is um, as we look at the renderings, I think architecturally in terms of bridging between some of the more modern uh, properties on the street and then some of the more uh, traditional properties on the street, um, I was disappointed to not see trim around the windows and then also at uh, the, the corner um, of the uh, the areas where we're protruding and resetting. Um, you were kind enough to include um, a portfolio of some of your work. And in on the um, second page of the portfolio, I don't know if you're able to pull that up, on the right-hand side, there is an example of this same type of contemporary architecture that I think would be much more architecturally sympathetic to the uh, neighborhood, which includes trim around on the mm -hmm. right hand side here, which includes trim around the larger punch mm -hmm. openings, as well as at the corners to again help define. I appreciate the fact that you're pushing and pulling the facade, but it reads very flat mm -hmm. without some of that articulation. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's something that when we bring it back to the board for discussion is something that I'll be bringing up. Thank you for your comment. Absolutely. Um, so any other questions for the uh, applicant before I open this up for public comment? Okay. So can you talk about that? Yeah. Architecturally, um, well, yeah, the architectural compatibility with the... Uh, Did not know that. Um, okay. So with that, I will um, open it up for um, public comment. So any uh, members who have joined us this evening of the public who would like to speak, please um, raise your hand. What I will do is I will give you up to three minutes. I'll ask that you introduce yourself with your first, last name, and address for the record. So at this time, would anyone like to speak? We know that the children place. Um, Mr. Collins has done some of the better looking developments in Arlington, I think. I'm a big fan of Western Place, and I really like the, the Mass Avenue Street townhouses. I think they really work. Um, I have to say, I'm really disappointed in this window because I just don't think that it respects its surroundings. Um, I walked here from, from um, Pleasant Street, so I came up Maple Street, which granted is a, you know, a special place, but it, you know, this is not all into this. This can be absolutely anywhere. And I hope that you will think um, just fitting in maybe a little bit more 
uh, properly uh, in the ministry to see so much change and so much of a key work in the past seven years. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other uh, members of the public question to speak this evening? Hi, my name is Jen Tool. I live at Nine Belmont Street, which is the little yellow house. Um, and um, Mike and Brenda have been very kind to um, work with us and um, have heard from us and have done a lot to the design based on our feedback and also the feedback from the Bill Marlin neighborhood. Um, it's very connected and active. Um, so uh, my comments are really um, not about the specific design, but more about the fact that this is the first development um, in Arlington to take advantage of the MBTA Communities Act. And I want to um, just speak to that a little bit. Sure. Um, so my husband and I have lived at Nine Belknap, um, next door to the Francis family, which lived in the, the old next door currently there um, for a decade. And we have um, two young children who are in Arlington schools. Um, and we appreciate the opportunity um, to uh, both speak with Mike and Brigitte, but also to, to talk to our neighbors and to you. Um, but stepping back from the bigger picture, for a bigger picture perspective, and I think I speak for a lot of the neighborhood when I say that, um, for, for a lot of my comments, but the MBTA Communities Act website says that the act is an initiative to help resolve the housing crisis in Massachusetts because we don't know about the um, lack of housing and lack of affordable housing and the state has among the highest home prices in the nation. Um, but over the course of the past four years, three of the 14 properties on Belmont Street have been purchased by developers. Um, it has been incredibly disruptive to the neighborhood. Um, we lost huge 100 year old trees um, because of the issues of um, People um, really have a hard time with the, the disruption in the neighborhood. Um, but the houses that were bought and developed were sold for between one and 1.7 million per unit. Um, so one could argue that these developments actually do not contribute to um, more housing for families and children in the states in the act, but actually contribute to the rise of cost of housing um, in the state. Um, one of the three qualifiers that's called out in the MBTA Communities Act is that the housing created is suitable for families with children. Um, a mortgage for $1.7 million unit is about $10,000 or more per month. And as a working um, and a two income household, that wouldn't be feasible for us, um, for anybody in our family, or for our children's teachers, or anybody in our family, really. Um, and um, you know, I think the proposed development of the multi-million dollar condos here at 5 to 7 doesn't really align with the spirit of the act to provide this kind of housing. I mean, especially given um, the postage stamp yards, um, the roof decks, and these tiny balconies. I mean, I have a toddler. I would never allow them on roof deck. You're, you're, you're actually at time. So okay. if you could um, I'll give you just one or two more um, seconds to do okay. it. Thank you. Um, so I guess what I just want to say in conclusion is just that, you know, I hope that we carefully consider this, especially given the impact of um, previous developments on this very small uh, neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, any other comments this evening? Please. Thank you. Uh, is there a microphone for ACMI? There is not. Okay. I'll do my best. Uh, I'm Carl Wagner. I'm uh, 30 Edge Hill Road. I'm a t uh, town meeting member for Precinct 15. Uh, first of all, a comment, uh, not a criticism of the ARV, but a criticism of the town of Arlington. This sucks. We need proper microphones and, and speaker systems for the people who are in this room and for the people who are watching for the record. I don't believe we do written record anymore. So um, you need to do better, town of Arlington, to have hybrid meetings so that people can participate. And I, I want to speak particularly, like this woman did, to the residents, the abutters that are affected by buildings like this. I, I won't take comment like others have about, about the, the building. I'll say it looks like they make detention centers for migrants or something, whatever. But but the building is going to cast a lot of shadow, and that, I, I think, has not been properly addressed for the neighbors. The building is getting rid of open space and permeable land. And, and most importantly, it isn't taking advantage of the new MBTA density overlay. It's taking advantage of Arlington. And if Arlington residents come to people like me, town meeting members, 
we can change the law to make it not so aggressive. I think it's very important, speaking to all of you on the ARB, I know you're volunteers and I thank you for your work. It's very important to hold this project to the letter of the law as much as you're able to. I know that MBTA density overlay took away a lot of your power. And I know that it's anti-affordability. These units will cost more than the, the price of the units that they're destroying. So we're making quantity, but we're reducing affordability and we're getting rid of open space. It's anti-Arlington. If you don't want to see uh, Arlington's town meeting go backwards and say, we need to have human-sized MBTA density, I ask you to use the power you have to restrict this project from things like, I think there's going to be a balcony 10 foot away from a children's bedroom. I mean, it's ridiculous. And uh, again, I won't say anything about the look of the project, but if I had to live in this neighborhood, I'd move out. Is that what we're going to do in Arlington? Move out? It's ridiculous. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other speakers this evening? Please. Yep. Uh, Peter Rubis, 19 Belknap, uh, three, three houses down from five to seven. I want to first of all direct my appreciation to uh, to Mr. Collins, uh, the builder here being the first. Yes, you're welcome. Uh, to enter Belmarlet, the neighborhood in question, and engage a butters in a conversation and make some effort to hear our concerns. Um, I have several questions, and I guess I'll ask them, ask the questions, and I hope people can respond. Um, it, it looks like the building height is 33 and a half feet, but that doesn't include the four uh, stairway bump outs that are on top of all the floors. Should those be included in building height as well? Um, Arlington claims to be aiming uh, and beefing up a commitment to renewables, uh, but when solar energy production is impinged by a tall neighboring structure casting shadows, whose rights prevail? Um, does Arlington have a more robust inspectional services than it did two years ago? Speaking directly in reference to 13 and 15 Belknap, um, that currently has three or four units vacant because of serious structural problems in the building. Um, that can handle the oversight that will be required as development likely mushrooms in the coming years. Um, and lastly, um, the development team suggests that this project will increase the value of neighboring homes. Uh, but, but what about the property, as Jen speaks of, at number nine, which will... <laughs> Sorry. Which will now sit dwarfed by and, in in, and often in the shadow of unit number two. Is the board concerned about their property value? Those are my questions. Thank you very much. Uh, would anyone else like to speak this evening? Please come back. Please, yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, by the way, for this whole project. Uh, First, last name and address, yeah, please. Sorry. Thank you. Ratnagar Wellenki, 21 Adams. Um, I would like to thank the developers and the folks who are undertaking this project. Uh, first of all, uh, what would two units is going to become four? That's that's great news for the increase of supply in the Commonwealth. Uh, the Federal Reserve Bank, in its most recent paper a few months ago, clearly said that it's supply of housing that creates mobility and that creates opportunities and reduces the prices. So, okay. now coming to the specific one, right? Would the members of the board agree that for as of right? Uh, users site plan review is limited to imposing certain terms and conditions in a very narrow use, and you cannot deny. Would you agree with that? Based We're on not going to answer questions. You can post them, and then okay. we will take all questions. Okay, sure. Thank you. Uh, the reason I'm bringing up that question is because site plan review for as of right pro uh, projects, which is allowed as per MBTA communities, is limited to just a very narrow scope of uh, you know uh, questions that you can pose. And you cannot deny, right? And that narrow scope is clearly laid out in Article 12 that was passed by the special town meeting last year. And that narrow scope is quite clearly limited to Section 3.4.4 of the zoning bylaws, which clearly specifies five or six points which you can debate and discuss and ponder upon for as of right projects, right? Um, so I would urge that this be limited to that, and the members understand that you know this is an as of right. 
and your you know consideration be limited to that narrow scope that article 12 specifies and which the attorney general also reminded us in their letter last year right uh, so that's one two i would even go far uh, and say right that this hearing itself is moot because section 3.4.4 of zoning bylaws is part of section 3.4 environmental review and within that in the applicability, it clearly states that the environmental design review, which is 3.4.2 applicability, it says that it's it's only applicable to very narrow specific circumstances. One is it requires a building permit and a special permit. It's an and condition, not our condition. This does not require a special permit. So environmental design review is not required, number one. The only other case it requires is it, it alters the facade in a manner that affects the art, architectural integrity of the structure. Fine, it does that. And again, an AND condition, AND is one of the users listed in subparagraphs A through I, and those are construction on a site abutting, abutting Mass Ave, Pleasant Street, Mystic and Metro Street, so on. The street is not on that. Where six or more dwelling units on the premises are there, this doesn't have six or more units. Auto service stations is not. Thank sure, you yeah, much. what I'm saying is that this Thank hearing is new. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak? Please. Thank Hi, you. Uh, my name is Daniel Green. I live at uh, 40 Irving Street. Uh, I'll take a slightly different approach, but basically the same question. I'm, I'm just interested in this board's interpretation of, of how what its kind of framework is for handling these, not given this as a new a new application. I'm just curious how you're thinking about that and how future um, proposals going through should, should think about that when they submit. Thank you. Uh, any other comments this evening? Please. Can you hear from back here or should I come up here? You can hear you. Oh, okay. Um, Susan Stamps, 39 Grafton Street, speaking for myself and on the tree committee. Um, I'm just surprised at the design of this building. I think it's very exciting. We have our first um, MBTA use project. Um, I'm very disappointed that it's a super modern square design in the middle of more traditional buildings on that street. Element two of the environmental the site plan review um, in the paperwork says that the um, proposed development shall be related harmoniously to the terrain and to the use, scale, and architecture of the existing buildings in the vicinity um, that have functional or visible relationship to the proposed buildings. I didn't do a sidewalk, but I just did a Google Street View and from what I can see, that looks completely different from all the neighboring buildings. And um, it would be great if we could have a development which uses a lot of those um, the great uh, aspects that the developers included here, but with a visual design that makes it look more traditional like the rest of the buildings on the screen. And as Ms. Evans said, apparently is what the developers done in other projects in town. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, any other speakers this evening? Please. Uh, my name is Peter Bloom on the Gibson Terrace. Um, I recently uh, met Peter and his wife when I was taking a, a very uh, typical detour onto their street because I like that neighborhood so much. I really like the architecture. And um, uh, I've always been kind of like, kind of disturbed at the design of the brick building that was just plopped in the middle of that neighborhood of more traditional architecture that was being referred to recently, uh, previously. And if that one is being used as a sort of a partial justification for this kind of a design, then I guess that would make it uh, even more likely that a third one and a fourth one would follow because it just becomes more and more of an excuse to continue that pattern. And I hope for the sake of that neighborhood's architectural um, heritage. I hope that that is not the case. That's all. Thank you very much. Any other speakers? With that, we will uh, close public comment for this hearing, and I will turn it over to members of the board for additional discussion, uh, starting with Steve. So, um, back to my time. Um, if it is, I realize that you're going through space efficiency. Um, if it's possible to have it the parking, you park you like parking in such a way that bicycles can just be wheeled in without lifting, um, I think that would be preferable. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's really all I have. <laughs> Great, thank you. Uh, Jean. 
just a few things. First, for those of you who don't know, under site plan review, we cannot say no, assuming that this project meets the zoning pilot. This is different than the special permit where we have no authority to say yes or no. This is what's known as desert right, which was required by state law on their MBTA communities. So we don't have the same sort of authority to say no that we would have had if this were in a special permit. Um, the zoning bylaw gives the NRB the authority to do site review for anything the MBTA community zoning, which is why we have this site plan review just lets us look at some of the things we can test me and maybe put some reasonable conditions in the approval, but not to say, no, we just don't like this building. Um, that said, I do think there's one um, area where this does not meet the zoning requirements, and that is the um, side yards um, used for parking are required to have a visual buffer and low plantings won't do it. So we, I think, in the kind of discussion of this one about this, this is a section 6.1310K in that sentence, requires that I think the board will have a discussion about my feeling about it at this point is that You'll have to come back to us with something that complies with 6.9.10. Um, I think we can deal with the snow removal in the conditions yes. um, we put on this. Um, the, the other concern I have is the ability of people who are on the rooftops and withholds in the city to see. And I just wonder how it brings us to the matter of on this. If it makes sense to have a side of the building that faces the left, the roof deck steps even taller and solid, so there's a more visual screen between um, the roof deck and the buildings next door. That may not be a good idea, but I just put it out for people um, to um, consider as we have. Um, our discussion. Um, and I'm interested in what other people think about uh, the chair's suggestion about um, what to do around the windows because one of the requirements that we can impose is the residential design guidelines, which I think are in line with what you're talking about. Correct. That's what I have to say. Um, Thank you, Gina. Gina? Um, so, so someone asked about the the height of the head houses on the roof, and, and just to weigh in, I believe that uh, things like head houses are not included um, over and above the roof height. So, uh, so that additional some number of feet, six feet or however much, would not be added to the building. Um, Gene, your, your idea about screening, sticking with the roof, is an interesting idea. And I think it um, you end up with sort of six of one, half a dozen of the other, right? It, visually, it increases the visual height of the building, uh, but, uh, but potentially uh, screens the neighbors from view. So I, don't, I, I don't am know. of mixed feelings. I am of mixed yeah. feelings about that. Yeah. Um, uh, I also had concerns about that driveway side. Uh, not quite the same concerns you did. That driveway uh, feels very narrow. It, it was useful to hear that uh, the driveway was adjusted to, uh, to accommodate requests from it feels very narrow, and, and, um, uh, and short, uh, or, 
or rather like you're fitting a lot of cars um, into into a short area. Um, and I don't know how you would retool that or if you could retool that, but but it would be um, interesting to look at. You know, I don't. I don't think that an extra foot of driveway width is is something that would change my mind about the project one way or another. But but it did give me pause. Um, uh, and I don't think that was. I think that was all. Thank you, Gina. Okay. I would echo some of my uh, board members' uh, thoughts uh, and maybe disagree with some, some of them. Uh, I think having some sort of screening along the perimeter of your parking is, is a good concern. I think if you put maybe, maybe a fence up there, uh, block the lights, that would help a long way. As far as putting some sort of screening up, up on the uh, roof deck, I'm not as concerned about that. Just because uh, the houses are next to each other and they're within the setback. I mean, if I'm on the on second floor, third floor, I can just right into the next door neighbor just as easy. So having screening up there is, I'm not as concerned personally. Okay? Uh, so as far as that, uh, and then. Uh, a stone, stone wall is fine. I think we just, we just make it as part of the uh, your uh, management uh, agreement with, with your uh, stone wall. Yes. Yes. Uh, so that's. So I don't think that's a, a big issue. Uh, but I also would agree. I did not know that we could actually talk about the elevations. I might have spoke a little bit more, but I think. Rachel eloquently uh, said that adding some extra trim there might break down the scale a little bit more, similar to the way you did it on the other project. And I think it'll, it'll make it look nicer. I have all, all the confidence you will really do that because we've done that in other projects that you've shown. So uh, I don't think I'm going to make a suggestion. I don't think we need to have you come back for another meeting. Say that if you were to take care of these, some of these recommendations, I'm okay with moving ahead with the project. Uh, even though we don't okay or no okay it, I mean it's just. Uh, we do, we do have to have to vote on whether uh, we approve the same plan and approve it with conditions, or we feel that it does not meet the zoning bylaws, and then we can just it. Those are our three mm -hmm. options so that the board is clear. Okay, but then if we disapprove it, isn't the project still as of right? Yeah, nope. We can't. Uh, we can't move forward if it does not meet the zoning bylaws. Okay. We've reached an impasse and it does not meet. That is where this, well, that is the words. But I, I, again, I, I think we are at minor items right now, so I don't think that that applies in this Okay. This is new. That's what we're just talking mm -hmm. about right now. I no. just, I'm not trying to. Letting you know what the three options are okay. that are in our specific rules and okay. it's, you know, This is very new to me, and I'm just trying to. The, where we where you know, where our footings are right now. Okay, so my statement still stands. Great. Okay, I would not. I don't think I would request them to come back in uh, for our show the fence or uh, some of the stuff you talked about. And also, um, I'm not strong on the, some sort of screening up on the uh, rooftop terrace. It, it, that was your question. What other people have thought about. I don't think it's that big of an issue. I just raised it as a question. I know, and I'm just yeah. answering it as, as my feelings. Yeah, if, if I might say something, a fence doesn't meet the standard in the bylaw. The bylaw says it has to be a vegetated buffer, so they can't use a fence. This is on the side parking. On the side parking. It has to be a vegetated buffer. I thought for it was... Uh, uh, a different section for a different reason, but on this one, okay. it has to be a vegetated buffer. So I think what we could do is identify um, what 
a minimum height would be as a special condition so that they would not need to come back as a proposal mm -hmm. to this board. Um, Steve, and then I'll provide my comments. Right. Um, so there is, I, I meant to say this earlier, I did like the chair's suggestion about doing a little more with the trim. Uh, the the uh, building from your portfolio uh, that we showed as an example, I, I thought was, was, was kind of nice. Regarding the, the, uh, the vegetated buffer, so the bylaw says that when a side yard is used for parking, it shall have a vegetated buffer when abutting a lot used for residential purposes. It doesn't say how big the buffer is. And most of my experience dealing with this was from my time on the Zoning Board of Appeals, where this would commonly come up as part of second driveway permits. And at least the, you know, the uh, interpretation I remember from ZBA hearings was that a foot and a half would be nice, but nothing less than 12 inches. And I think you're proposing 12. I, so I, I'm okay with a foot. Yeah, I'm not. I think it has to be at least car height. I'm sorry. You're, you're talking about the width, and Gene is talking about the height. height. So yes. You, those are two different, mm -hmm. two different, uh, two different items. Yeah. Yeah, I think the width of the buffer might work, mm -hmm. but I think you have to have a vegetated okay. buffer that at least is car height. Madam Chair, if I could just because the rest of it says to minimize. Uh, Gene, can you say 6.1.10a? So last sentence. Side yards used for parking shall have a vegetated buffer when abutting a lot Thank used you. for res residential purposes to minimize visual impacts. Thank you very much. So is there a particular vegetation specified for this buffer now? No. So, so since there's not, it's not actually a change to the current proposal they would be requesting. It would simply as... I would agree. I think my concern, and we can talk about this as a board, is that it would be, uh, because it is not defined, it would be um, and uh, it would be a condition that, um, an undue condition that is not consistently applied, which I, I don't feel meets the intent of the site plan review. That is something we could look at in the future, but again, I think visually there is planting, it's not specified the height as to the, um, what constitutes a visual separation, there is a planting strip that would be, um, and again, we don't review as many of these because we don't do as many right. of the residential mm -hmm. districts. Right. Um, but that would, but, that but would be This fine. is the first one, and we're going Understood. to have more, and so this will set a precedent for what we do later, and I think it's important to say it ends with to minimize visual impacts. Mm -hmm. Having something that goes up to the top of an automobile tire doesn't really minimize visual impacts. Mm -hmm. As I look at it, something that goes to the top of the car would minimize. And I think cars are what, like 48 inches high or something like that? But you, if there's a fence there, you, you can't and you can't see through the fence. I'm not talking about what, what you're saying there, yes, but I'm just talking about practicality here now, okay? When you have a, say, a vinyl fence that's up there, that's, that's blocking yep. the light, so your light from your headlight of your car doesn't blast into uh, to someone else's house, which to me makes a lot of sense, all right? Then we're, we're, we're ambiguous on, the, on, the, on some plantings, if it's tall or short, I'd rather it be nice as opposed to tall or short, just so that, because the, in, from the other side, you're not gonna see the car because the fence is there blocking the lights. So what they could do is put up a fence and put um, vines, you know, grow vines or something else along the fence and that would allow them to have a fence and have a vegetated buffer. As but the bylaw specifically says vegetated buffer. It does not say fence. So we do want to make sure that we're not imposing a requirement that will make it impossible to use the space. For example, to open a car door. Correct. That mm -hmm. is my concern. So just going back to parking, um, 
I believe, so you have two compact spaces currently shown? Correct, two compact and two 22 compact right. spaces. Um, and this is for the board. I believe that per section 6.1.11C11 that um, only 20% of the spaces in the parking in a parking area can be Compact. Except, except, except in MBTA, district fifty percent of the spaces can be compact, so they meet that requirement. Thank you. That's that way. Okay. So the items we have are um, there was a proposal for a condition that um, it would be preferable for the uh, bike parking to be. Uh, such that it did not need to be raised. Did not require the bicycle to be lifted. Right. Okay, there is a proposed condition uh, for um, adequate snow removal conditions for the property. Um, I feel very strongly that architecturally this needs to be um, much more in line with the neighborhood by, again, the, the thing that I think would, would uh, I understand the contemporary design, I appreciate, I see them um, throughout town, I think it can be done much better than what is shown and that uh, adding, without adding the trim um, and again, vertical, the trim around the windows and at the, uh, the corners of the building that this does not architecturally, um, this does not architecturally, um, this detracts architecturally from the neighborhood as opposed to uh, adds to the fabric of the neighborhood. And I would like to propose to the board that we make that a condition of the special permit and for that to be re reviewed together with the uh, Department of Planning and Community Development. Um, I agree with Ken that I would not, that I, I, I don't have any issue with the, um, uh, with the, um, uh, balcony, the um, group deck, thank you. No, the, uh, the upper, uh, Fall protection. Well, it's a screening at the top yes. of the building. Yep. Right. That's not a, a roof deck. That is that is just um, mechanical space. But I, I don't believe that. that I, I think having the fence actually helps keep the massing feel like it is okay. lower. Um, so I'm I'm fine with that as proposed. Um, and uh, I think we need to decide whether or not. Um, we feel that there is any um, condition required with regard to the visual screening uh, at the at the side yard. So I am personally fine with the vegetation as proposed. Again, to Shana's point, you can open a car door, and I think that um, it it um, we, we don't have any. The specificity currently there. Okay. Your thoughts on it? I'm okay with all that. I only want to add one more thing, which sure. is the site lighting. Yeah, that it meets the requirements. So I'll ask the um, applicant team, um, and I'll direct this to, to the attorney mm -hmm. and, and to the developer, would you have any um, concerns with meeting those conditions around site removal? We'll, we'll talk again about the, the, the vegetative barrier, but with the um, mm -hmm. bicycle parking, um, the um, articulation of the um, punched openings for the windows, as well as the um, the uh, corners of the building and um, 
so it was the snow removal, the bike parking, and the um, articulation of the of the openings in the corners. I'm fine. You're fine could with I, those. Okay. Could I, could I ask a Please, question of course. on the vegetative? Bike? Sure. Because we also read it very carefully, and we were trying to figure out exactly what's what the intent. Required. Yeah. Sure. Exactly. If we went with a higher plant, a four foot, or five foot plant, is there any requirement that it has to act as a continuous hedge? Or could it be a four or five foot plant and then six feet another four or five foot plant? So we'd have the motorist be able to get out of their car, um, but yet you would have a visual buffer and it would be higher than those low plants. It's just a question, not a proposal. I don't know the answer because we haven't faced this before. I, I, personally, I would have no issue with, with that, Shana. No issue. I have no issues with the height of things, so I'm not, so what you're saying right. is even more. Steve. That's fine with me. No issues. So how far apart are these plantings going to be? Uh, so there is a vegetated section between Unit 4 and Unit 3 parking, um, and at the front of the site. So how many, so where would it be then? So, so you would put you would put low plantings along the entire vegetated yes. buffer, and where would you put the higher plantings? I would put the higher ones where there's no parking. You see a little bit of a different uh, different symbols for for the plants, and it goes all back. The discussion with our landscape architect actually who recommended that and I was like you saying my first shock was oh this needs to be all high as a shield and he said yeah but well we have done it in other towns people cannot open the doors or they would do it anyway and then they destroy the plants and it looks ugly and what I from a designer would like to avoid ending up with plants who look like developer plants nobody takes care of or they look ugly that's not one. We want to be more uh, which which sustain the use and the, the site. So the suggestion was where there's no parking, having the higher ones and there's parking executed. But we could sprinkle in a couple of higher ones as you, well where the cars are parked. You could put a higher one at that differentiates each one of the parking spaces, for example. So at the front of each one of the parking spaces, there'd be a higher one. And then the, the rest of it would be the lower vegetated buffer. Would that work? Yes. Yeah. Hey, Gene. Would that work? No. Why not? Because it doesn't say that in the zoning. We're, we're sort of making it up and putting requirements in right now. I think we're that's- working. The, what we're doing is we're working with the applicant to find something that works for the town and for the applicant. So Which is fine for this project here, but I don't want to change what was approved and start making changes to it because we feel like we don't agree with it. Can, can this is a, I mean, every site plan is going to be different, and this is what we do as a board, is we work together with it, the applicant, whether it's a special permit, whether it's a site plan review, whether it's environmental design review, we work together with them to help figure out how to meet both the requirements of the town, of the individual site, of the neighborhood, and of that project. So I think, again, talking about the fact that this is a unique site, every site is unique, and you know, the fact that we're, we're um, you know, the um, design team is, it has already started to consider this with their, with their landscape architect. I, I think this is a great discussion to be having with them so that we can figure out the right solution I, 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 for I don't, each site. I don't disagree with you, okay? I'm just saying that we're setting some sort of precedence right now. So if some future developer comes up and they say, okay, here's this regulation here, but it's, it's vague. So now it's up to whatever the board feels like at the time. We're having a again, it's Which is fine for this one, yes. But it's fine for, that is what we do in every single project is we have a discussion with the applicant. I think it's just, this is my first feeling. I just feel it's unfair to developers for future projects when they say, okay, we're going to have to come in and discuss Does anyone else share Kim's concern? 
It is a vague portion of the bylaw, and um, sometimes that requires talking through to develop a, you know, an interpretation. Um, but you can use that interpretation in the future. So, ideally, with this is something we would clarify at some later point in time. But we're not there. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move us on mm -hmm. uh, at, at this point. Um, so the conditions of uh, what I'm going to propose is a um, motion from the uh, board to approve this site plan, um, uh, site plan review application with the conditions that the applicant work together, uh, work to create a plan as part of the condo documents, that they um, uh, review the residential design guidelines and work to um, add additional um, trim and um, uh, around the, uh, the the window opening, the punched openings, as well as the um, the uh, corners of the building. Um, that they uh, that they uh, review the bicycle parking to prioritize. Parking that does not require bikes to be lifted into place for storage, and that they include um, a vegetated buffer um, of uh, four feet um, where uh, where possible um, in the uh, in the 12 inch uh, zone to the uh, plan east of the building as you're looking at the uh, site from the street. Any modifications to the proposed motion? Yes. Uh, and that the uh, project comply with uh, the uh, lighting, the site lighting requirements for the town of Arlington. That there be a low vegetated buffer along the entire parking area, and at the beginning of each parking space, there be a higher vegetated buffer. I think that that is too prescriptive and vague. Um, it's less vague than the I, I agree that it's too prescriptive once they, once they get in and they locate the EV chargers and, um, or the EV stations um, and everything else. I think I I think we need to leave a little bit of flexibility, but but maybe language um, to the effect of uh, to the extent possible or in the spirit of you know, what we've discussed here. Um, uh, then why don't we have them come back for two things? One is so we can see what they're going to do with the front of the building, and second, so we can see what they're going to do with the vegetated buffer. For site plan review, I uh, don't believe that this is an as of right project. I think that the applicant has demonstrated the willingness to um, work with these particular applications. We can ask that they um, uh, submit to the Department of development um, updates um, to to show how how they've addressed it but I think asking them to come back again defeats the as a great uh, purpose of the site plan review oh I think we can have them come back more than once we're not going to say no we just are working on a couple reasonable conditions Gina I, I disagree um, I I don't think that, I, I don't think, I think these are de minimis issues. Okay. Steve? I, I think administrative approval, I would prefer administrative approval. Okay. Yeah, that was my original thought. Okay, uh, so back to the, uh, the motion, uh, the point that was made around the vegetation, I think that Shana made an ex excellent suggestion to modify 
that uh, condition of the site plan review approval uh, to uh, state to the extent, extent possible, raise the vegetated buffer in the 12 inch um, uh, planting strip uh, between in the uh, in the 12 inch uh, planting strip. Any other modifications to the proposed language and to add the uh, com uh, yeah, compliance sure. with the site plan? Yes. Uh, no, I'm okay with that. I'm willing okay. to. Are you willing to make a motion? I'm willing to motion uh, as as noted. Great. Is there a second? Second. Second. Yes. Okay. Is this subject to administrative review by planning and community development? Uh, uh, yes, I believe we should be working together with yes. the with the applicant. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, so we'll take a a vote, uh, starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Shana. Yes. Ken. Yes. And I'm yes as well. Thank you very much, and I, again, I really appreciate you working with the community, working with the uh, Department of Planning and Community Development, and working with us this evening to um, uh, to move through this process. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, that closes uh, our first hearing of the evening. Um, Can I have a two minute break? Yes, and there has been a request for a two minute break, so we will start. <laughs> I'll now turn it over to the applicant uh, for anything that you'd like to share with us today. Yeah, I'll just uh, follow up where we left off. Uh, Great. State my name again, Darren. Dunch, Please, thank you. Uh, owner, on the French architect. So we had a night to follow up on our updated package responding to the Abbey's request from our last meeting. Uh, as you remember, Bob and Nessie was my counsel during the approvals process. Unfortunately, uh, he's on permanent medical leave and won't be joining us. I have been able to counsel with him a little bit regarding the situation. And, uh, he does send his regards. He said, send his regards. <laughs> so I had to carry that from Bob today. Thank you. Uh, Monte is going to present the architectural piece here. Uh, before we do that, I, I just want to uh, speak out to the community a little on minutes and hope they get taken care of properly. Uh, there's been a lot of inaccurate information circulating about this project, social media and whatnot. I don't have social media. My kids do. Uh, people I know, they send me clips of craziness. Um, so we're at a low as a community when my kids ask me what I did wrong on my project on Massive. And are you in money trouble, Dad? So that's something I just want to make sure the minutes carry clearly to the community. Along with anybody that has any comment, I would, I would certainly encourage them to bring it here and address it here, not address it outside of you. Uh, as you know, I was contacted by Mike Champa last 
April, letting me know that my permit was issued in error and that Mike recommended that I go with the access board, which we all talked about at the last meeting. Uh, we vetted that out. Okay, I'm a member of this community. My family migrated here in the 60s. My three children are in Arlington Public Schools. I've coached baseball it's now for 14 years, so it's important that the record is straight. Uh, that's not directed to you, I'm just using the platform. So I've been 100% committed to working with the ARB and sharing your vision since when I first met with you in the Annex building in 2019 when I came in to share your visions. Since then, I've complied and communicated with 100% of the process in the town in the ARB. So at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Monty. He's going to share the new plans and sketches uh, as requested. He'll show you a code compliant and zoning compliant plan. Uh, so we would like to Thank you everyone. Uh, as Darren said, my name is Monty French and as Claire mentioned, we've got a lot of different uh, things that we were submitted based on our conversation last time we met. Uh, updated plans that show the first floor accessible unit um, in place of the one side of commercial and a few studies, one related to an elevator, which I think was brought up in our, meet, our discussion last time as well. And then a couple of additional, well, one additional study, I believe, which was the parking uh, aspect. So I guess just to speak to what's up on the screen here uh, quickly. So this is the actual proposed updated plan that shows some of the things that we talked about last time. One being removing the side corridor that was on the left side of the plan left here, uh, which took uh, the bike access out towards the front of the building. Uh, and we previously had steps on the side of the building that went up to the, to the rear yard. Um, I'll remind you that in our meetings with the Mass Access Board, uh, we proposed providing that open space at the side of the building uh, for the accessible unit, and that was accepted by the board. I think we shared uh, that documentation with you all. Uh, I did review it, I think it is in there. Um, so that really checked the box with them. We worked extensively with the Map Mass Access Board. And uh, I'd like to note that uh, we worked very closely with the director, William Joyce, to have him review every aspect because I know that there's been other questions about other aspects of the process. And I know that there's some questions out there. I'm not going to get into it, but I would say unequivocally that though he reviewed every aspect of those and has approved them, and we shared that documentation with him. So just to address that matter. Um, so now you'll see, to get back to the plan, the, the left corridor was removed in favor of giving more space back to commercial and residential. We tried to do that as much as possible. I think in previous schemes when we had commercial, we had a, a bathroom that was shared. So there was a linking corridor between the two commercial spaces. So now it's become a little more efficient in not having that. So now the commercial space has a dedicated bathroom and a little bit of a storage closet that we were able to provide. And that actually gave a little bit more space to the bike parking area. A little, a little more roomy back there for bike parking and trash um, access. Uh, so you'll see that that access is through the side yard. The accessible unit has access to that side yard space for open space. We have more bike parking that is out at the left corner. Uh, I think we talked about removing some of the bike parking uh, required bike parking out of the front of the building, and so we moved it off to the left there. Um, visitor parking is still located out front. I think we have more than was required there, so if we wanted us to remove a rack, we could, but uh, I think just in the spirit of keeping things that were there that were approved from before, we kept it. Um, to note that, uh, so I think, I can't, I can't remember the order of the drawings, but there are some analysis just to show you how we arrived at where we're at. These are um, uh, I guess just more of the floor plan of the unit. You can see the accessible unit on the left, which has a galley style kitchen and a group one accessible uh, bathroom. Again, we reviewed this with the access board and everything about it. Um, uh, if we keep scrolling, this, uh, these are all the drawings that were required to be updated based on that change with the side yard and uh, the bike rack and things like that. Uh, 
again, a view of the side yard, which removed the stairs that led to the to the rear yard, and now that is going to be the accessible space, or the open space and access to the bike parking, and a bit of a, a change to the rear again because of uh, the stair. Um, next. Uh, very minor change here that we we'll speak of next. So this is where we get into the analysis of how we arrived where we're at. Uh, and this is going back uh, even to the initial approval that had the two commercial spaces with the central uh, shared bathroom and four more space for access to those. And then um, we had proposed that the access to the trash and the bike parking be done through the rear of the building. That would have called for an extensive grading, which uh, Mr. Danucci ran into several issues with um, ledge there. And, and so we requested a change to have that access be done through the front, which was the corridor that we have now removed. So we had this condition. We requested a change to raise the parking and provide access to the side, which necessitated that corridor, which we would get done rid of. Um, so that's kind of to give you a little synopsis of the analysis of that. And then moving forward, this is what transpired from that. Again, uh, access from the side yard. Uh, if I can go back there. So that is the analysis of how that changed there with the side corridor over to tr uh, bike parking and trash and mechanical um, and how that all changed. Uh, and then stemming from our last uh, meeting, this is where the final uh, plan has landed with access to the those rear spaces still from the side yard, but eliminating the corridor. Um, the amount of square footage towards the office space is 600 square feet, um, and the dwelling unit is 550 or 549. Um, so again, just a bit of a, a breakdown of how that the stepping stones of how we arrived at where we're at. Um, just to keep moving, keep things moving as quickly as possible. This, uh, we back up, I know that uh, Mr. Benson, you had requested, and some of you all requested some of the documentation that we had gained and some of our correspondence um, as to how we arrived at some of those changes with parking and, and building. And I know that there's some sort of, there's a little bit of question of those things, but from our perspective, I think that you know we, we did try to go through the proper channels. I don't know exactly how it transpired on the other end, but hopefully this kind of gave you a little bit of uh, little look into how we tried to go through the proper channels to do that and move forward with those approvals through this letter, and that's why we made those changes and just to demonstrate that we were acting on our own accord. Um, uh, again, this is the these are. We can move through these unless you want to get into it, but these are the drawings that kind of accompany that request. That, um, this is the email correspondence related to that. I won't get into it unless you'd like to discuss it. Um, if you've had a chance to do that. Um, and then this is, we wanted to provide a little bit of doc, photo documentation of the existing conditions of the project. Uh, Mr. Danucci had made it quite far with the project until um, it was brought to his attention. Some of the things that we need to address, so this is kind of the current state of the project and where it was. So this is the side yard, this is the part that would be removed and we would have some planters and paving, some things like that over there in the side yard space. Uh, that doorway would be removed in favor of the doorway at the rear, uh, left rear. Uh, this is the current status of the driveway. It's just it's not finished grade here or anything like that, but it has been rough, roughly uh, prepared. Uh, we know that there's things like trench drains and uh, all the other things that are required uh, um, for the project. Uh, and then looking left from that same vantage point, this is the rear yard again and not finished, but uh, this is shortly after Mr. Danucci had capped off his um, stormwater retention system, which is underneath the grading over there in the far corner. Uh, they, they had the retention uh, tanks that are over there. You can see the PVC pipe that's going in and around this side of that. Um, and then down the 
below, this is a view of the right side commercial space and the status of that, so it's substantially complete. Um, and um, obviously a little tight. Uh, this is the left side. You can see the current wall right there where the corridor is going down, so that's the that's the wall that would be removed if they were given the space back. This that's the, the question. They would have then the full width of that storefront. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is at the rear. So as you wrap around the corner, it's going to be removed. Bike storage, trash, and beyond a secure canopy space that already has maybe the next door does show. If you scroll down a bit, all the electrical roughing is done. Fire protection roughing is done. Um, plumbing, all, all those things, all the meters are in. So just to give you a little bit of insight on that. And then we quickly went through to give you a sense of the units, the finish level of the units, before they're finished. I think the only thing that's not done in the units is appliances brought in. Uh, but you can see that everything's painted, hardware's in, before they're finished, walls are painted. Um, nicely done, um, in my opinion. Um, just to get through that, that's each unit. In the second quarter, we'll try to get through all that. Um, uh, yeah, if we could kind of yep. just get to the last. This is the, the elevator place. study. So, I think in the last meeting, there was a question about what it would take to incorporate an elevator. So, I guess a little bit of background the elevator piece is something that if we put an elevator in, it has to serve all the units. So, it would be very disruptive. We can't just do a loop or anything like that. Um, so, we tried to find a strategic place to put. It. We didn't want to put it at the front of the building, which would block off the storefront. Um, we didn't want to have to move the stair, which would be extremely disruptive. Um, this made the most sense to make things work uh, to us. So we, I, we put together a quick bullet point. I won't rehash it in the interest of time. Uh, down the right side, everything that it would take at a minimum to get this in there would be very disruptive. Elevator pits, rearranging structure, rearranging plumbing, mechanical, electrical, um, moving the bathroom over, and adding the elevator control room, uh, quite a few things that need to happen. And normally in a building of this size, we would not, quite honestly, we wouldn't do this. We would go back to our original plan and we would submit it a, a few years back and try to get that accessible again. Or mistakes were made, and here we are. Uh, next study. This is just how it is disruptive up at the top. We didn't modify both sides, we just showed one side, but it would be mirrored. Uh, the condition on the other side, direct access to the units. So the, the other issue is you get owners that kind of would trans transfer between units. Uh, but you can see it modified. It uh, causes bathrooms that have to be moved, kitchens to be modified, and some walls to be moved around. And that, um, Oh, it's a, uh, so there was some parking studies. I did see. I have to go really quickly through those because uh, we're got an hour for this hearing and we're eating okay. up a lot of it right now. So oh, there's the parking study. So just quickly, we did a couple of studies to get the standards. Great. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Um, I'll turn it over to members of the board for uh, their questions, starting with Steve. Okay, um, could we go to sheet A102? I think it's A102. A102? Yep. Well, that's a study. If you can just go oh, no. It's page five of the, uh, of the document. Okay. Yeah, it's page five. Yeah, so regarding, um, if I may approach. Uh, so the intention or what proposal was to use these two spaces as permanent bike storage? Uh, do you actually, um, Claire, if you could just scroll back to the page four, I think it is. So, yes. so the, the, we've got these six spaces here plus these two here. Oh, okay. Yeah. So based on the way the code read are, there was a certain percentage that could be outdoor. So that's what we were trying to take advantage of. And then these were visitor 
parking space, right? So the um, one of the goals with um, long-term parking is that it be uh, safe from the weather, but it also be secure. So I think the out outdoor spaces would have to be in a, an enclosure, uh, like a bike box. An alternative. Okay, okay. we'll look into that. We may, must have mis misread it because we went through it a few times and thought there was a provision that allowed us to put it on. Okay. So an, an alternative, um, and this is this is sort of based on Boston's bicycle layout guidelines, but one of the scenarios they illustrate are 45 degree angle oh, racks um, yeah. with uh, a four foot on center spacing. Um, with the these with this arrangement, it would be really tight to get four in like this. Well, I but think it also would, might be tough to get the trash. Right, yeah, and I think that with the angle, with the angle of angling 45 degrees, you can get the four in, and you might, you still have a lot of five foot walkway. Okay, we'll give it a shot. And uh, one other question regarding um, the change to compact spaces. I, from uh, some of the documentation you provided, uh, it sounds you ran into some unexpected prop side issues site issues with uh, both ledge and the shoring of the retaining wall to the rear of the property. Did that play a role in shortening in the need to short, you know, change the dimensions of the parking spaces, basically? Yeah, I mean, that, that, I think, I don't know if we've got all that documentation in there, but that was the email correspondence. I think Mr. Danucci could probably speak to that a little bit more. So what happened when we had the engineer come up to design the walls, there was a um, calculation that it has to be so far to maintain a certain angle. You just can't go up against the other wall. Mm -hmm. In order to do that, we had to put a giant footing in. So that's, that's, the, that's the zone of influence. That's yeah. It. So when the engineer came out to draw, we had the space to the lot lines, and you know we had plenty of space. But then once we had to draw, you know, build that retaining wall, mm -hmm. engineer to get got pulled back. I want to say six feet from the property line, or maybe even eight. So it was six or eight. Okay. Thank, thank you. That's all I have, Madam Chair. Thank you, Gene. What's your proposed size of the accessible studio apartment? I didn't quite figure that the, out. The gross square feet was 549. I think the net is like right in the high floors. Because like I see here studio 484.6. That's net. Yeah. So okay. that, that's the net square footage. Okay. I think it showed in the diagram we showed it as a gross square footage. So what what's the difference between the net and the gross? Uh, exterior wall thickness okay. and things like that. And is the only window for the studio yes. out front, it's not possible to add a window on the side? No. How come? Just that we've already got we're cutting another hole in it, so we've got a hole up front, and we'll have to infill that with some framing. And then we've got a hole in the back, and, we, they, and plus we've got a kitchen all along that wall. Um, and and honestly, we, this question actually came up during the access board review mm -hmm. about making sure we got plenty of light depth and it's right. actually plenty shallow enough for. It's actually quite a deep, tall window. Um, how does the occupant of the studio get to use the trash cans in the room and back? I'm sorry. The occupant, sorry, the occupant of the studio, would that person use the, the trash receptacles in the room and back? Are any of the, none of the parking spaces are accessible no, size, right? right? And right. We did, I specifically right. reviewed that with Mr. Williams. That right. was in the AAD package. Right, yeah, yeah I was just yeah, confirming. I right. Um, and finally, if I understand where you are now at is two regular size spaces and three compact we did spaces. provide two studies that show right. and the both. ways to get the two spaces in there. Right. We, we spoke about it. Mr. Danucci is happy to do But, either. yeah, I just, I just want to be clear. We're now at how many 
regular size and how many compact size? Uh, in both studies, we get three, two, three, two, two regular and, and three, three compact. compact. Okay. Yeah, I've I don't been trying have, to get three, and I, I just. I don't have any other questions. Thank you, Jean. Shana? Um, so, so that front window um, does provide lovely light, but is um, is quite commercial. Or that is, is there any way uh, to create a slightly more residential feel without uh, without huge visual impact from the street? I'm not sure what that would be, but. A more specific version of your yes. question. The phase of double hung four or four windows, I, would, uh, I know that the two commercial storefront windows are different sizes in that particular unit. Are you able to get uh, those types of double hung? Could you get two double hung windows in each of those bays well, so that we don't have a storefront window looking into a residential space? I, so like I, I, I think I read where you're coming from. They Even do, if they're yeah, tall. They do like, make actually uh, applique grills, if that uh, makes any sort of sense. But I think that there are ways that you can remove the glazing block and put in different things. Mm -hmm. um, to answer your question, like it can be modified. I don't want to speak to, for Mr. Danucci, but if we're talking about changing it so that it looks there are easy ways to make it more. That's what we're really so, so my thought on it was that the building would look terrible because you lose that consistent look of the building. I think it looks great just the way it is now. My thought was to spend some good money on some up and down, you know, blinds, a real nice blind system. So, you know, the person inside gets to appreciate what they want. They can have privacy. They can have like top light so they can still have privacy. Um, I never thought about changing that back after the storefront went in because I thought your vision was the commercial vision. That's, well, that that's was when it was two commercial when spaces, it was commercial, so that's why yeah. we're having this conversation. Yeah. So, I mean, if and you'd be opposed to it. No, I wouldn't be opposed so to it. the storefront where we can take out yeah. the blazing home. No, we can, it needs to be, you want to soften it up and make it residential. That's your question. I didn't, I'm sorry I mean, for I, jumping I, in. I just no, wanted no, to that, that throw so much. I think, okay. I think. I think it would be best to do it, you know, aesthetically because that's what you're looking for. I think functionally it's fine. I'm going to come up with lines for, you know, whoever was in there as a tenant so that they can be happy. But aesthetically, you're talking about bringing some of the weight down there and making it pop or staying with the black storefront. I think you want to stay in the black. Right? Like I'm trying, yeah, trying to understand what you're thinking. I mean, so. So I had initially I thought, thought your question. No, no, no. I had initially thought, but but Rachel is the architect. <laughs> a um, a you know a partial uh, partial wall. Um, it would I think need to, to add an artificial wall underneath. to add a newel underneath. But um, but there are certainly other ways of achieving. And, and that, that you could achieve it that way to to dig into that storefront. I mean, at this point, you know, if we move forward with this plan. I still have to go backwards on hundred thousand But we have to excavate, cut, saw cut all the floors that have the piping already in it, redo the sprinklers, redo the electrical, so we can do it, we can take the windows apart. But I think dressing that up, I think aesthetically, we could simply build a half wall. Like you said, it could be on the exterior and it could just oh, okay. Well, Keep in mind, you're not going to see that because we have the landscaping. So you're going to have the one opening for the door because that's like a five foot opening there between <coughs> those columns. The reason the bases are so big is because they're structurally covered. There's a big structural base in it. <coughs> but there's going to be complete landscaping to you know to the right and to the left, um, not real high. But it's going to be you know three three four foot landscaping. That when that gets finished, you're still going to have that buffer. But it doesn't address the look from the interior. From right. the interior, correct. Right. So from the from the exterior, uh, from the exterior, it looks lovely and it does have continuity. And it's, yeah. But but from the interior, right, um, it feels very 
And that's where I was going to try it. And I haven't done this before. I've done, you know, verticals. I've done horizontals. But there's some like half and halves. I was going to try to find something for the tenant so they could not have a vertical and lose all the light and almost have like a, almost like a top third. I haven't even scratched the surface on what's available for that. But that, that was my thought. So, um. I mean, it'd be real so, simple to, to build a wall, half wall on the inside, actually. But if you don't address it from the outside as well, it works. Well, I think inside. that's why I was trying to suggest the Apple K grills that can be of certain thicknesses and depths. And then that lower part, if we had a grill system that gave a residential scale to it, the lower part we could put a frosted fill in there that's permanent. And they do make like bottom up shades and top down shades. Right. So you could do a thing where you have shades that do this, and you can have drapes that come across to give you different levels of privacy and things like that. Yeah. I'm sorry, did you have other questions? Nope, nope, that was it. Thank you. Ken? Uh, I do agree, Shannon, about uh, softening the back up a little bit. And I have all kids in the to come up with a idea to soften out the shade. Uh, I think your idea of adding some Grills maybe help, but I think Chen's idea of having some sort of a half wall, some sort of packing in the inside, uh, so you have the residential look from the inside, but from the outside, you still have that continuous look all the across, which is good. So, so you can move both ways. Now, you have, you, you gave us two schemes for parking, option one and option two, right? Thank you for uh, doing that. I'd like to do is, uh, we had last time asked you, would you uh, mind, since you are resubmitting this in, it was not part of your requirements, and I uh, acknowledge that. Uh, electric car, electric, electric uh, charging, electric car charging. That's on our conditions. It's, it's we, we have that already in, the pipes are already in the uh, home so you have one or two? We have one, but the two is easy. No, no, no. Yeah. Let me finish what I'm trying to say. Yep. I'm not trying to add more things, okay? If you have one, I would I would uh, go with uh, option one, and then you put it in a little strip there, and now you have the ability to have it on a, a compact car and a full-size car. You get a car who can use that ch charging station. Oh, okay. But if you use option two, which is split in compacts, Full size. Now you might have to use two because if it's a full size or a compact mm -hmm. charge, uh, you don't have that ability to do that. Well, I actually, I think, if I can interject, I think option one is better for a snow removal. Perspective. One is the one that's all the way across, right? Yeah, because yes. if you do it the other way, like snow removal. Yes, I, I agree with you there too, okay? But I'm just trying to, I was going to get there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, I'm not sure if the rest of my board members think, but. Uh, I would recommend going with option one. I right, guess because it's a snow removal, but also the ability to have a shared uh, charging, charging station goes either way. Yep. And I, I think that would be fine. And then um, I still haven't quite got my hands around the grading on um, the parking in the back and then your. Uh, it's not really open space, but space that's sort of sloped. How is that, that tapered down into the parking, or how does that work? No, it, so it will be graded. It, it has to be of a certain grade. I mean, what you saw in the photo is not finished. Yes. So it has to be graded in a certain way to meet the zoning code for open space. If that's, yeah, it, it will be co-planar with the parking. Okay, so, so it'd be somewhat flat. Yeah. So and that wasn't the original plan because we, we had done a bunch of test pits. If you look at the original plan, that was much higher. Yes. Okay, yes. but what yes. happened when we got in there and started working, we actually won that battle. That was one of the battles we won. So we kept digging it down. That's why you see in the picture that it's going to maintain uh, grade with the open space right into the parking. And and we, if you see the little blue, how the, the retaining wall comes out. Yep. It, I stopped it there because we had fencing that was initially on top of the retaining wall. Yep. But because we got down flat there, we stopped there in case we had to switch the parking a little. 
but then there will be the fencing separation from the open space to the parking, allowing the walkway to still continue. So what I'm saying is though there's two things there on that hashed in area, the, uh, the of that uh, open space, all the water and snow is not washing into the parking lot. No. Because it's, it's not going to be graded towards it's similar the parking It's similar to right? Correct. Okay. And that's sitting right on top of the recharge system, the water system that the drains go under, and the back parking lot wall. If you look at the long retaining wall, okay. that catches all the water okay. behind it in stone and goes right into the recharge system. I'm just asking this because things yeah. changed and I want yeah. to make sure make you know this doesn't cause public issues. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I'm glad you did you're aware of that. So that people can actually walk from the parking into that sort of open space and use it. Okay. You know, barbecue chips, uh, uh table so on so as opposed to going up the stairs and so it's it's easier to use. And it would be It's my last, and sorry, yes, oh, uh, I appreciate you changing and taking away the quarter, making the space fit. I think that I know that cost a bit, okay, but I think uh, it added the space to me. It is a better layout when it's done. Okay, okay. Thank you. That's all. Thank you. Um, so I just want to go back to the point that Shana made about um, the experience of the facade somebody living in this unit, you know, we approved this. Um, I will also say from my perspective, this may or may not be the view of the rest of the board. You know, I, I'm certainly very disappointed not to have this whole first floor be commercial as we originally approved. If this is approved, it is uh, because we are trying to work with you in the condition that it is from my perspective, and it is not at all a precedent for what we would approve. We would approve uh, full, full for a mixed use project, we would approve typically the full first floor as commercial space. So I just want to state that for the record again. I know we're trying to work with you, what is here today. To oh, I, I appreciate fight. that. But again, I, this is know. more for, for, for record and I, and I want to be clear on that. Um, every other residential unit has the ability to open their windows in this unit. So that's why for me, being able to have double hung windows in this unit so that that person can naturally ventilate their space to me is something that's very important in order to be able to approve this. I think that it is, if it is done, you've done a nice job with the rhythm of the fenestration above and I think if we're able to bring that down below, whether there is, you know, a two foot knee wall, three foot knee wall, whatever it needs to, to happen, um, I do think it's very important that the accessible unit have the same, you know, um, ability as the other units. I think it also helps to differentiate where the commercial space is versus the residential space, um, which, Again, knowing that this was designed with a specific use in mind, it, if approved, will not be the same use. It, to, to me, um, it is always our goal to differentiate commercial space from residential space so that it is very clear to somebody coming to the space where the commercial space is. So that, that's another reason why I would really want that to be, those to be double hung windows. Um, Again, that is my feeling. We'll discuss it as a board, but I, I just want to build on what she The only comment I would make is, is if it satisfies you, I know we, we said we weren't going to cut another window on the side, but that, you know, if that satisfies your double hunt, I, I would elect to do that from a construction standpoint because we get all those glazing guys. Those storefronts are very expensive. I think even though it's another saw cut, I think Nick, if you look to the left of the kitchen, I think there may be enough room for a double hunt right before the end of the unit. If we can go back to that page. Can so I that's just, only if it satisfies. Uh, Gene? I mean, that would be my preference. 
would be to find a place on the, the side the wall, right there, on the side wall yeah. where they can put in can a, get, residential, can a, very large a residential, a residential window. The, the other advantage is it's not facing out on this end. I agree, I agree with you. You can put a, a window in the bed, in the bedroom here. It's not really. A well, that's what I'm thinking. A big double hung right, right in the bedroom, right? And then that, yeah. there you get mm -hmm. your air. If, if that works for everybody, I would. That would be my first choice. My first choice too. Be, <laughs> and I got the saw cutting guy going anyway. It's off the cost. You would probably close that, uh, close that wall up and put a door there and call it one bedroom. No, Monty, you're trying to get me in trouble yet? No, it won't be accessible. Mm -hmm. It won't be accessible. You're no. talking about closing off the bedroom? Yeah, but now you got your window there, so you make it a bedroom. It doesn't have to be steer door. Steer door. No, but like you won't have the maneuver. All of the five foot, you're going to have accessible spin. Don't go there, Ken. Just let them. Let's let do the interior. Yeah, yeah. Don't, let, don't go there. I'll shut up. <laughs> Not my day. <laughs> I'll think about that during public comment. I'm, I'm still really, um, I'm very concerned about how that will look with just using shade. It's, it's, um, more. any other comments before we move to public comment? Okay. Uh, is there anyone uh, this evening will open public comment who wishes to speak about this uh, item? Okay, um, I'll remind you, you have up to three minutes. Please introduce yourself first, last name, and address. Thanks, I'm Carl Wagner, uh, 38 Hill Road, Arlington, and uh, town meeting member, Precinct 15. I'll again say, uh, town of Arlington, please make this a better audio situation. We can't hear each other. And uh, the people on the ACMI recording need to hear what you say, particularly, but also us. So uh, my comments are: I want to applaud the board for uh, standing up for the occupants that will live in the first floor accessible unit, and uh, it looks like a cave or maybe a prison cell at the moment. So thank you for insisting on windows that open because glass windows on a building I think that faces the north, so it would be dark all the time. It's really, I wouldn't want to live in that place. Maybe you could require the applicant to live there for a year or something if you don't require those windows. The second thing I'd say is I'd, 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 I'd thank the, uh, the planning department and the town of Arlington and the applicant for following the accessibility laws of the United States and of the state of Massachusetts. It's so great that these have been acknowledged. I'd also draw everybody's attention to the uh, correspondence that the public sent in on this item because they point out that I believe the parking is still not uh, legal. I believe that uh, the ARB has a ability to reduce to 80% the regular sp spaces uh, and at the, uh, at the moment it looks like it's three uh, compact and two regular or something like that. So it's, it's very important that, that parking spaces work for the applicants, for the, uh, for the people who live there, and particularly if they're going to need an ADA or an accessible uh, unit, I think it's very important. So I would ask that, you know, perhaps it should be four parking spaces, I don't know. But uh, this, this whole experience could be useful for future buildings that are trying to go through in mixed use. It's great that the ARB and the town are, are getting serious about our state's laws and our nation's laws, and I, I thank everybody for making this closer to that. Thank you. Uh, any other comments this evening? Great. With that, we will uh, close public comments. Um, please, of course. So just keep in mind that um, you don't have the fishbowl effect because all those windows are, are tinted and can additionally frost them. Just when you're making a decision, they are very tinted. I, under, I understand Autumn. that. My, my yeah. concern is that, again, it doesn't feel like a residential okay. unit. Gotcha. And um, I, that's of a concern to me when we're designing a space, yep. and it's a very, um, it's designed for a very specific use, and, and you have four other units which um, th this becomes a less than unit in, in certain ways. So that, that's something I'm yep. working yeah. through. I, while we're on the, the topic, and before I send it over to you, Steve, um, what we're looking at is the side of, if we cut the, window in the in the masonry we're looking at the, the the side of the adjacent commercial 
property, their Correct. their wall. Correct. Um, would you be willing to do any? Um, and, and again, part of it may be working with that um, owner as well, but to do some sort of a planting, you know, some sort of a vertical vegetation, whether it's. I don't any, have to work with him. He's a great guy. I don't know. But uh, my property goes to him. He's on a zero clearance to me. Right. Our only concern is when we excavate, what his foundation looks like there on the ledges. Right. But that's my problem. But yeah, I can certainly so you soften can do some that sort of wall. Trellised yeah. vegetation. I'm probably not going to do that. I'm just thinking about what they're looking <laughs> yeah. into if we yep. elect to take that option yep. because that's yep. not a lot of light yep. coming through that yep. area. And again, um, that certainly yep. helps from a natural ventilation. But I also want to think about what they're looking at. Yes, yeah, and I'm just looking right now, and it looks like Monte already has some plantings and planters in there, so that's something yeah. we can continue on that. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, Steve. Um, I'm glad uh, I, I was planning to bring up the facade, and I'm glad uh, my colleagues did because I I, I forgot that. <laughs> um, I do like the idea of uh, doing an additional of putting a putting a window on the side. Um, there's I've heard a couple of so far. I think we're. I've heard a couple of ideas about how to treat the front. I'm not sure we've settled on something yet. Not yet. So, do you have thoughts? I agree that can can we just go to one of, you know, having some sort of a. Um, I think the floor to ceiling window, uh, floor to ceiling fenestration does look, it that does look very commercial, very much like a storefront. And if there's a way to. Um, like wall off the bottom of that somehow, um, you know. I, I think that would be an improvement. You know, basically, just you know, windows at the like the top third, the top half, but something you know solid at the bottom. That's that that it. That's my thinking. Thank you, Steve. Uh, Gene. Well, I, as I've said before, I think. The large window on the side makes it a much better project and will make it a better place for someone to live. I think we're dealing with a really difficult situation because none of us wanted to be here for this. We, you know, back in what, 2019, five years ago now, came up with something that everybody thought was fine and it turned out not to be fine. So we're faced with what to do with this situation. So it's one of a kind, which makes it especially difficult. Um, I'm not as concerned with the front window if we have a side window. Um, I think if there is some way to soften it up, and there are some ideas mentioned like real work, things like that, I think that would be fine. It's not ideal, but we're not dealing with an ideal situation. I just want to mention something that Mr. Wagner brought up, because I was going to bring it up during this discussion, which is the parking spaces. And I mentioned this when we were last here. Um, I believe we don't have the authority to give them more than one compact space. Um, we would have the authority to reduce the parking to four spaces if they gave us a transportation demand management plan. And maybe if there were four spaces, they would all be um, regular size spaces. Or alternatively, depending where we end up on some of these little things, I would recommend that we approve this, except that they would need to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals to get a variance for the parking if, if we can't do something with the number of spaces. So my question I would ask back is, if there were only four spaces, would they all be standard size? If you go to option two, which is one page down, so you can see that I've got two standard there. Right. If we didn't have those three compact Two standard next to it. So we could do that. Four. So we've got, we've got two here. Yeah. We can put 
but with option one, you can't. No. I mean, you, you go back could to option one. Put the, the back out. So the reason we did this is that uh -huh. this provides more back out maneuvering uh -huh. space. Uh -huh. If you were to put standard spaces here, you just don't have the maneuvering space that you would need. Uh -huh. So option two provides that maneuvering space. How would you feel about having only four parking spaces instead of five? You would have to yeah. s tell one tenant that that tenant didn't have a parking. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's, there's, there's always there's parking out front. Well, not overnight, though. That's, yeah, that's the true. problem. So, you know, I'd be interested in whether you would do that or... I, I think that and then we think need we're going to get more than one tenant there that's going to use the, the T-stops right out front. I think we're going to get more than one tenant without a car. I don't think... So and I then think, you just buy his market it that way. So then if we would do that, sorry to bring this up, but I've been thinking about this since the last meeting. If we were to do that, we would need basically a transportation demand management plan. The criteria are in the zoning bylaw, right? And we could... I think um, you kind of check the boxes for most of it already with the car charging station. And I, I would think, but take a look at it, and then we could... Um, we make it subject we we could make it subject shower. to the approval of the planning department so that would be an alternative way to deal with the parking Jean, um, I believe that the board can provide relief on 6.1.11 C11 which is the compact parking spaces uh, much like we do when we are working with other projects to work within the needs of the project to provide I, I, relief. I will not vote for that. I, I, under, I understand, but I'm, I'm letting you know what yeah. I believe is within the board's purview from working with special with uh, town council. Um, I'd be interested in the the other uh, board members, however, if, however, if the applicant is willing to go down to four spaces and provide a transportation demand management plan and work together with the Department of Planning and Community Development, then the point would be moved. So, so I don't understand it all. Yeah. All that's important to me is that I finish the project. So yeah. whatever it takes to finish tonight, that would be. And, okay. I, and I, I'm pretty sure that we have all the needs for the TDF, yeah. which is like the car charging station, a shower, and shower. commercial space. Commercial space. Well, your commercial space is not applicable. It's about the residential spaces. Because well, I know, but I think that, okay, yeah, I, I think that that came out of probably some of the past. Um, they may have put a shower in the commercial for bike parking. Uh, Originally, so that was one of the right things. Go, go ahead. So, um, one of, as um, you know, just to bring it up again, um, electric bikes are kind of a th are rather popular. Um, I think that something like providing outlets near the in the bike room next to the racks um, to use as to use as charging state to use as chargers. I, I think that would to me would that's be a good element yeah. in your TDM. And, and another one would be. <laughs> and and that's and then you know to separate and to charge extra for parking. Yeah, no, that's all easy stuff. Right? That's just all easy yeah. stuff. That's what to we put. need to go that's into the do. plan, right? To submit to Claire. Right. Okay. Gene, any Gene, any? Well, I'll well, if we're going if down. we're going there, we won't get into a discussion about why I think we do not have the authority. Correct. We're not going to. Right. go into that because right. we don't need to and you and I can speak, speak separately about okay. that. Okay. Gina? Um, uh, I'm so sorry. Gina, did you have anything else? No. Okay. No. So, so, I think the operable window is important. I am not, I, I think if it's on the side, that would be fine. It would be lovely if there were more operable windows. Um, but uh, regardless of whether or not there's one on the side, there does need to be, in my opinion, some treatment of the front. Um, some, some treatment of the front. Oh, okay. 
uh, and and there have been lots of great suggestions. I'm open to many of the suggestions. Maybe one that more great one if you want to hear it. Go for it. So if you look back at the, the, the studio drawing with the with the kitchen, the galley kitchen, I want to just look at that for a second. Take that whole kitchen, okay? Mm -hmm. Take that whole kitchen and shift it. Oh no, we're going to eat the room. We could take a cabin out of that because that door that we're going to close up could be another window because it's already a hole. So look, if you want, you know what I'm saying? You can so rearrange just rearrange it to put the sink over there. Rearrange it, right? Because we already have that door that we're going to close up that's punched out from the foundation. We can put a second window there so we get two double hunts. Very reasonably. I'm not as concerned about well of course I'm not as concerned about I'm concerned that you have a window in the bedroom. Okay. That's my okay. Okay, but I, but I'm not gonna speak for the rest of the four So members. we can have one in the bedroom, we could have one in the bedroom and one that opens in the living room, which maybe allows us to keep the storefront but dress it up instead of remove the glass. I'm yes. I have no problem with that. But I don't I wanna no, take Shannon's thunder away right now, what she's talking about. Sorry. I'm I'm having a difficult time visualizing that. Can you go through that one more? So he's saying that um, currently we have an opening here for the door. We would yep. we would close it up to a height above the countertop and put a window there, and then put another window here. Yep. So you've got two windows. You can get some semblance of a cross breeze through the space. Yep. Um, and then across the front of here, like I was saying, you can get superficial grills that you can put on the window and you can do some other treatments to help provide a little bit of scale and privacy um, to, the, to the existing place. So, love the idea of the two windows on the side. I think I, uh, I, think I would want to see an image of what the front looks like. And that's something that we can ask you know, potentially for you to follow up yeah. with um, the board through Department of Planning and Community Development because I've seen um, attractive and not so attractive versions of this room, as I'm sure you have as well, Monte. So um, I think. Um, Believe it or not, you will not see any bad on my I have. The, I, I, I again, I, I, I appreciate do. the. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I know that Wendy is a very talented architect as well. We have always, you know, you've always put, you know, very nice buildings in front of us. Um, can you remind me, are those, those are not wood windows, those are, they're, they're aluminum. They're aluminum There's flat. a company in, in actually in, in Dorchester called Diamond Glass, Diamond Windows. They did that. Yeah, yeah they, they, they actually and they make those. the surface yeah. applied. And it's not like a plastic or whatever, it's aluminum. Yeah. Extreme. Applique, yeah. they do true divided, and this gives like a simulated divided look. Um, so, that. so I'm not opposed. Um, yeah, I'm not opposed. I want to see what specifically you're thinking. Well, I mean, we'll yeah. cook up some stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I have only one thing. Uh, are we over bike, over bike uh, parking? Yeah, just for visitor. Because I, we still like you to get rid of the two in front of the president. We, 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 we only left them there because, and Emily was like, should we take them out? We have more than we need. And I was like, well, it was approved with them there, so let's leave them there and see what you all say. So if you're okay with us removing them, I, I would like to because this is now residential, and I don't want them to have a front porch. Yep. And having quite uh, stems coming out there, we're through them of having a couple of chairs where they sit outside and make it. That's going to soften the whole image up. I just didn't want to remove things. And remove them, so. Well, I'm suggesting you do. I'm not sure. Any concerns the board with the board thinks. about removing those two spaces? No, uh, no. As long as we can, um, if you, we can get all eight in the bike room with the, you know, the change to the orientation of the racks. It, uh, I'm, I'm okay with it. no problems here. I'm fine with it. I think so. Thank okay. you, guys. Okay, so remove bike parking in front of first floor residential. I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
I agree with Shana. I think if you can provide to the ARB through the Department of Planning and Community Development an elevation showing you know, your proposal or um, some options for the simulated dividers, I, I do really think it needs yep. to be differentiated yep. from the um, from the uh, commercial, and I think that um, it will help to when, especially in an accessible unit, that's a wide expanse of glazing. And so to have an up-down shade or something like that and have that width, I've had really wide shades like that and those very unwieldy to um, maneuver. So if you have the dividers, it allows you to break it up and have multiple ways of pulling those up and down, which I think will be um, more appropriate in that type of a unit. So again, just thinking about the actual living within that space, um, to me, I think that would solve a multitude of challenges as long as we have the two windows so that we again get some cross ventilation in the space on the side. Again, as long as yeah, we, we work we through can the sit department and, and as far as like right. manufacturing vendor or info, so you know right. where it's coming from. Yeah, and I just want to make sure the documentation comes here that it will be completed and that we take a take a look at it. But I would be fine. At other board members, please weigh in if we move that to an administrative mm -hmm. approval. Again, using the language of your upper um, story yep. windows as the guide. Okay. So we two punch windows. I'm going to reach out to the glazer anyways just to see if he has any tricks on his suit. He might yeah, have run right. across this because that's what he does. Okay. So I'm going to run through the conditions for approval that we've discussed this evening. Um, reduce the parking to uh, four spaces with a transportation demand management plan to the Department of Planning and Community Development. Four full-size spaces. You can't do four full-size? Yes. Yes, yes they can. Oh, sorry, four full-size full -size spaces. Okay, yes, sorry, can. I misunderstood. Yes. Four standard spaces. Thank you. Um, Remove the bike parking in front of the first floor uh, residential unit. Add two punch openings to the masonry wall into the accessible unit. And uh, vegetation, vertical vegetation along the uh, wall of the adjacent property, directly across from those windows. Submit a an elevation detailing simulated divider lights to be added to the two front windows of the accessible unit to the Department of Planning and Community Development. And Steve, I believe that you had an item about bike parking in the interior. Uh, yeah, uh, getting all eight in the bike room. Ensure all eight units are within the, the building. Mm -hmm. okay. And there would also be a TDM plan. That was the first. Oh. That, was the, that was in the first. Oh, first my, my apologies. But there was an well, of outlets in the bicycle. You were asking like for a car station at the parking at the TDM. Right, that would all be part of the TDM mm -hmm. plan. Yeah. So the charging, um, yeah, I think so. Any other uh, conditions? So these, because the special permit was reopened, these would be um, new conditions um, that would be additive to the conditions originally placed on the special permit. I just wanted to clarify that for the uh, voting purposes of the board. These, they would supersede 
in the case of a conflict, these new uh, conditions would supersede any prior conditions. Well, it's easy enough in the amendment to say stuff like only one commercial space to look at the diagram. Right. Like right. Yeah. Shall we conclude? Yes. So, um, is there a motion to approve? Uh, Docket number approved, docket number 3633, the reopened special permit for 1500 Massachusetts Avenue with the conditions as stated. So noted. Second. Uh, we'll take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Gina. Yes. Ken. Yes. And yes as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the finish that place. All right. Thank you too. So that closes agenda item number three, the public hearing for docket number 3633. We'll now move to agenda item number four, which is the appointment of a representative to uh, the CPA committee, and I'll turn it over to Claire. Great, thank you. Um, uh, it's my understanding that the ARB enjoys a um, um, designated seat on the to uh, distribute and dispose of uh, the Preservation Act uh, monies that are taken in on a yearly basis. Um, I believe we have a nominee for the seat and the board just needs to uh, take a vote to confirm that person. Is there a nominee? Yeah, nominee is that. Yeah. Can't nominate. What do you make the nomination, please? Nomination. Shana? Shana, sorry, I apologize. <laughs> I am losing today. Happy to do it unless somebody else wants to. I'll second the nomination. Any other discussion? Okay. Is uh, So we have a motion and a second to appoint uh, Shana to the, as the representative for the ARB to the CPA committee. Uh, we'll take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Shana. Yes. Ken. Yes. And I think yes as well. Congratulations, Congratulations. and thank you. You're the <laughs> third one on this five-person board to do this. Really right. appreciate it. It's something that's very, very important to you. It really is. To the town. Gee, Three, and how many years? Years. Three and how many years? Is it like people hurry off no, as quickly no, no, as no. they could? No, I'm kidding. It's and good to cycle through. I something. was on three or four years. Did you, did talk, you did your two sessions, didn't you? No, I think three or four. All right, well, I'm going to move us to the next agenda item, which is agenda <laughs> item number five, open forum. Um, so if there's anyone who would like to speak this evening, uh, please uh, go ahead. Again, you'll have we, we spiel quickly. You'll have three I'll, minutes, first, last name, quickly. and address. Everybody wants to go home. We now live in Orchard Place. I just wanted to follow up on a concern that I brought before the board several months ago, and it was triggered by walking by 882 Mass Ave. Uh, which looks a lot better with the black trim, and thank you guys all for making that happen. Um, I know that there were um, some irregularities with with this building, and I noticed when I walked by the other day, speaking of mixed use, that the entire Mass Ave facing ground floor is a gym for the use of residents. The back of the building has uniform shades, all drawn, and no signage indicating commercial use, so I'm assuming that this is no longer a mixed use building. The frosted glass on the massive facing side, I think, does not meet the transparency requirements, which is 60% of the glass between two to eight feet from, from ground level. And I believe that this is probably reversed. It looks more like 60% is transparent. So if anybody goes by and wants to check this out. But where I'm going with this is that the affordable units in that building were undersized, overpriced, and, and not properly dispersed throughout the building. The concern I brought before the board some months ago had to do with the same um, property owner's project at 455 Mass Ave. The one bedroom affordable unit was 687 square feet, which does not meet the minimum 700 square feet required by state law. I cannot find a plan set that is more recent than January. So my question is, has that been resolved to your knowledge? Uh, sure, I was going to actually, well, why don't we have Claire um, respond to that one actually, please. Um, we are working closely with the developer, especially concerning unit size. It's not the only project that we're you know, um, uh, uh, 
focused on you know making sure that you know any affordable unit um, is appropriate for the labs. Actually, Sarah does a lot of the work um, to, to make that happen. So we are in constant contact with um, with developer for Dubai about their unit, about their unit size, about their design, um, you know, design of the units. I think the two bedroom is over 900 square feet, so it's, it's just the just the just the one that is. Okay, great. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you all. Great. Can I answer one more question, Shane? Please. Uh, it is still a mixture of building. It's the, the whole first floor is not a gym. Okay. Well, it's, that's what that, it looks like the office is along the back might be for. The it's a therapy. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, what did you say it was? Uh, it's a tenant that rented out as a therapy gotcha. uh, space. It's a commercial space down there. Okay. I don't know why they don't want to put signage there, but I told them that they had to put signage up there. Come to us, get signage approval, yeah. and uh, they don't want it. So that's where that stands, okay? So be it. Okay. Thank so you. we can let that go, okay? Thank you. Thank you for that clarification. Thank you for that clarification as well. Thank you, Claire. Sure. All right, with that, we will close uh, public comment. Uh, Thank you. Back up. Thank you. And uh, see if there's any new business. Claire? Um, no brand new business at this time. I just wanted to remind the board that we are having our joint meeting with the select board on uh, Monday in the select board chambers. Um, I am working with Ashley to make sure that everybody um, is, uh, that we have a table for this board to sit at, um, you know, rather than uh, have you seated in the audience uh, when the select board is uh, seated in there in the middle spot. Unfortunately, we can't use the Lions here in the room. It is um, still uh, undergoing repairs and leaks and um, from the removal of the cupola at the top of the building. Um, but uh, next week on Monday, we'll be our joint uh, meeting. That's my point. Thank you. Um, and agenda will be uh, forthcoming on that. Um, I can um, assure you that the items that we have identified as a board have gone to Claire and to uh, Ashley for uh, inclusion on the agenda. Any other items? Thank you, Claire. No other items. Thank you. Okay. Ken, Shana, Steve. Yeah, uh, two questions. Um, number one, have, have we gotten any responses to the AMP UP RFP? Um, we have certainly received quite a few questions. Oh, okay. Uh, which I'm hoping is uh, an indicator of interest in responding. Um, I held uh, a, a briefing on August 23rd and we had two firms um, who uh, uh, showed up to that. It was uh, Stantec and Mitch Engineering. Um, so I'm very, I'm very hopeful that we'll uh, be receiving. I, I, haven't, I have not checked yet on the number of responses, um, but I am working with um, uh, our, our purchasing officer uh, closely to answer questions and things like that as they're coming in. Okay, cool. And uh, my second um, does the department have a booth at Town Day, and do you have any staffing needs? I appreciate the question. Yes, we do have a booth at Town Day, um, and you know, I think I think we'll be able to staff the, D, the DPCD table. Um, I would certainly be um, more than happy to take on any volunteers. I know we're um, short at um, Island Community Energy. Um, but that's that or Community Electricity. That that, that table in particular is, is short uh, a volunteer. Um, but if we've got some volunteers at the DPCD or the, the, the DPCD table, then maybe we could flex some others over to the other to the other DPCD tables. And what can you just highlight the the projects that we're sure. looking to uh, highlight? Sure. Uh, so we'll be looking at we'll be highlighting the master plan. We'll be highlighting the Arlington Heights um, business district. We'll be highlighting the Fox feasibility study, and then we'll be looking more at oh affordable housing costs. Mm -hmm. Oh, excuse me. They have their own. The 21st? The 21st. Any other business? Okay. Uh, with that, is there a motion to adjourn? So, motion. Second. We'll take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Jean? Yes. Shana? Yes. Kim? Yes. And I'm the answer as well. This meeting is adjourned. ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help.